the new year is an excellent opportunity to start a new habit or a new hobby that's ultimately going to add something to your life. Unfortunately for a lot of people, that boost in motivation and energy that you get from the beginning of a new year and the rest that you get over the holidays often wears off pretty quickly, leaving behind a trail of crushed dreams and broken resolutions. New year, same you. If you end up falling off the bandwagon of your new year, new you plan, motivational gurus across the in Instagram and internet space will happily yell at you about how maybe you just didn't want it bad enough and you weren't trying hard enough. Unfortunately, lots of those people are the same people that fell in love with the process of training early on in their lives and now live a life that's built entirely around their ability to do the thing they love to do, which is train hard in a gym context. For some of them, it extends to the point of an entire identity built around this idea. And so in that instance, it's really hard for those people to have the empathy for the person who doesn't love training like they do, who lives an adult life with responsibilities and a job and bills to pay that make scheduling that time into their life a much more complex task. Over the 12 or so years I've been a professional coach, I've had at this point hundreds or thousands of conversations with new clients and potential new clients about setting goals in training and understanding what it is that they want to get out of this process. Some people come into that initial conversation about a coaching relationship with a well-established list of goals and an understanding of how they define success, which ultimately makes my job much simpler. When you know what you want to get and how you define success, we can build a plan that's about understanding where you are now and what you need to do in order to get to where you want to go. For a lot of people, the discussion we have in the initial stages of a coaching relationship around setting goals can be really hard to understand, mostly because they don't have the context with which to understand what's achievable and realistic in whatever the time frame may be. This is really common with people who are new to the training space and just getting into this process. They often come in with some variation of, I want to be fitter and stronger. On the surface, something like that seems like a really good goal to have. The reality, though, is that it's a little too nebulous and broad as an idea to be very useful in terms of building a process for training and long-term progression. Something like broad and nebulous like that when it's really hard to measure your progress and success because there is no defining feature, is a really fast track way to lose all of your motivation when you get to the point at some stage in your training career that you run into some serious hurdles. Maybe it's injury, maybe it's a change in life circumstances, but those people who don't have a very good understanding of what they're trying to work towards are often the first people to fall off the wagon when things get hard. Ultimately, you're an adult with adult responsibilities and at some point in your life, you're going to have to deprioritize training in a way that maybe makes it harder to get things done. Having a really concrete understanding of what it is you're working towards is one of the best ways to ensure that when you get to that point in life where things are hard, you have an underlying reason and a direction in which you want to move that can be that reminder and that source of the motivation you need to get the work done. For the people that don't have a good understanding of their goals coming into this training process, I like to use a little thought experiment that I'd encourage you all to spend a little time thinking on over the next few days. For the sake of this thought experiment, we're going to assume that having made the commitment to start your training process today, everything over the next two years lines up in a way that allows you to train consistently and hard over that period of time without any serious interruptions or issues. Ultimately, that's not how it's going to go. You're an adult with adult responsibilities, and at some point, you're going to have some interruption to your training process. But for the sake of this experiment, let's just pretend that doesn't exist. Now, having imagined two years on from now, everything's gone perfect in training, and you're in this position of having made two years of progress, what does life look like at that point? What role does training play in your life? How do you fit it into your schedule? What are the aspects of life that you're currently unhappy with that you want to improve upon? Or what areas of your life do you think this training process is going to improve? Are there aspects of life outside of the gym environment in a physical sense, hobbies, things like that, that you want to be better at? Two years from now, how do you want to feel both mentally and physically about your relationship with your body and the things you're able to do both in and outside of the gym? All of these are just a few of the different questions we can ask through this process in order to help you dig deeper into what it is you want to get out of your training time. 
Now, while you think about it, I'm going to tell you my answer. I'm the most competitive person you're likely to meet anytime soon. And since becoming a parent a little under five years ago, my only motivating factor in training is to ensure that for the next probably 15 or so years, I can kick my kids' ass at just about any sport they want to try. Fortunately for me, I've had about a 30-year head start, and they don't even realize we're in a competition yet. While I enjoy telling this story, mostly for the reaction people get when they realize that I'm 100% serious about it, ultimately this is about a slightly deeper motivating factor than that. I recognize that my life has been positively influenced by physical pursuits for essentially as long as I can remember. My whole life is obviously built around training and things like that. But for me, some of the greatest lessons I've learned and some of the most amazing experiences, both good and bad, that I've had physically have come from training hard for something or working hard in a sporting environment. I'm now at a point where I want to be in a position to ensure that my physical capabilities are never the rate limiter for my child's experiences. What that means is my training looks a lot different now than it did when I was a competitive powerlifter. There are aspects of training that I care far more about than the weight I can lift for one rep. Now, if the idea of slam dunking over your crying child or relentlessly bashing beamers into them in a street cricket game or goose stepping past them with such grace that they're left lying flat on their back wondering what just happened maybe isn't for you, then that's okay. This isn't about you taking my goals and making them your own, but instead this is about providing you some context and ideas to think about that you can spend some time perhaps over the next day or two thinking about in order to help be in a position to reverse engineer what it is you want out of this training process. Because once you have an idea of where you need to be and what role you want it to play, we can start to ask questions about what training looks like. What are the ways we're training? What are the methods we're using? All of those sort of things become far more relevant when we understand what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go. For some of you, that looks like performance in a powerlifting context. For others, it's about living a more healthy life that allows them to do cool stuff on the weekends. None of these goals are inherently good or bad. It is ultimately about you deciding what it is you want to get out of this process. And sometimes thinking about what life is going to look like is going to be far more effective than trying to put an arbitrary number on a bar or on a scale. Over the course of a life of training, I'd expect your answer to these questions to change. Maybe regularly. Maybe every few years. Maybe not. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you're spending time reflecting on what you're doing and why you're doing it. So that you can get the most out of the time you spend in the gym environment and life in general. Training should be a positive influence on your life. It shouldn't feel like a chore all the time. Sometimes it will. But it should be about you doing something that you enjoy that adds something positive to your life. It won't always be easy. It is often quite hard and sometimes unpleasant. But if you have a better understanding of why you're doing it and what you're working towards, you're far more likely to stick to it And ultimately, consistency is the winner. If you can do something consistently, even just a little bit of something consistently for a long time, you'll continue to improve. If you understand what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go, that consistency is much easier to achieve. If after all of this, you're still really unsure about where you want to go, feel free to slide into our DMs and talk to me about what it is you need to do or where you want to go. And maybe we can workshop an idea about how you can get there. For now, though, I hope you have a strong year and I hope to see you all in the gym soon.